Hello everyone, I hope you're all well and had a good weekend. Um, in the last chapter we found out that all of the children in the PDF had um, one thing in common and that was that they had all been to the local dentist, Dr Fussbundler, and had had a filling. Um, so we join them in chapter 24, Revolution, Revelation. Let's see what happens. This was a revelation. And the kids had realised something super, super quickly. They couldn't be the only kids in Starkley to have had a filling. That would be madness. How could Dr Fussbundler pay for such nice white walls if they were the only customers? How could Madame Couscous survive if she wasn't selling enough sweets to rot children's teeth? No, there must be other kids who'd had that grey gunk slathered on their teeth by Eric Fussbundler. And that meant there would be other pause walkers out there. Hamish knew immediately that this was important. We can raise an army, he said. Sure, said Venk, in three days. We'll break into the tooth hurts, said Alice. There should be a record of all the kids who've had fillings in town. Then we can just go round door to door. We'll recruit them all to the PDF. And that was when Buster stepped forward. Or in the 26 minutes and 26 seconds of this pause, he said... There may be another way. At the very top of the very, very highest roller coaster at the fun fair, all six kids had crammed themselves into the very front carriage. The gap tooth otter, said Hamish happily. We meet again. This had all, always been Hamish's favourite ride. That's why he saved all year to make sure he could go on it again and again. An enormous spindly roller coaster with a giant plaster otter's head at the bottom. His dad had introduced him to it and said it even used to come to Starkley when he was a kid. There was a space in the middle of the otter's two enormous front teeth for you to shoot through at high speed. Elliot had already been sick twice and all they'd done is, was climb to the top. Buster pressed stop on the remote control he'd rigged up. My dad was an engineer, he said, as the carriage teetered at the peak. I used to practice for hours in his garage. Was he taken too, said Hamish. Is your dad out there in the woods somewhere? The group fell silent. No, said Buster. No, he wasn't taken. Oh, said Hamish, realising what Buster was saying. Oh, Buster, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Now Hamish could guess why Buster was so determined. Buster just wanted to make the world a bit better. It was easy to see why, sitting at the top of this roller coaster, looking out over Starkly at night. You could see everything from up here. You could see the town clock. You could see Grenville's house. You could see the top of Hamish's roof. You could see Winterbourne and St. And St. Autumnals and Spring Grove Primary and the summer house nursery. You could see it all. The pause had frozen the town at a beautiful time of night. This seems quite an unfair punishment for poor toothbrush technique, said Elliot sadly, being stuck in the pause. Hamish hadn't thought about it that way. He saw it differently. He saw it as an opportunity. I guess I'm just scared, admitted Elliot. The first time it happened, I was just stuck there at breakfast with my family. I'd just made a joke about particle physics in relation to quantum mechanics and they all froze. It was like they just didn't enjoy jokes about particle physics in relation to quantum mechanics. Weird, said Alice. Anyway, said Elliot, three minutes later, they all started eating again like nothing had happened. From that moment, I just felt a bit disconnected from them, like they were one thing and I was another. You're just like them, said Hamish reassuringly. You're still one of them. It's just that at the same time, you're different too. Maybe you've got a chance to help them, protect them, protect the world, prevent the final event. Out of the blue, Hamish's dad's words came to him. Prevention's as good as a cure, H. Always prepare. Then, look, Alice said, you were right, Buster, movement. 
Somewhere far below, a tubby lad in a stripy top darted nervously around, scurrying about and checking the bins. I know that kid. His name's Dexter, said Alice. He's scavenging. Maybe they got his parents. And over there, look, cried Buster. There's a girl down there. They can join us. The girl, who was maybe 11 years old, was carrying a vast, teetering tower of pizza boxes. She's not eating all that on her own, said Elliot. There must be even more, even more pause walkers. Yes, they all yelled, high-fiving and slapping each other on the back and smiling and laughing and stopping, and stopping very suddenly when they heard, vah -ha! That wasn't me, said Buster, with a guilty look on his face. Oh, no, said Alice, the blood draining from her face. The bugle. It's a terrible pause, said Venk nervously. I thought this wouldn't be a terrible pause, Elliot. They must be going even faster than we thought, said Elliot, pulling the graph from his PPP and examining it. We need to get down right now. We're sitting ducks up here. We can't get down, cried Clover. They'll notice a roller coaster screeching about. What do we do, said Elliot? What do we do? They were trapped 90 metres in the air. Everyone looked at Alice. She was always the one with the answers, but the first time since they'd met, Hamish saw she looked lost. Alice, said Elliot, but she was struggling to find the words. We wait, said Hamish, taking control. We keep still, we keep quiet, and we hope they don't look up. From the very peak of the ride, the gang watched in horror as the Terribles emerged in greater numbers than ever before. Out of the woods they poured, seeping into town. From up here it looked like an ever-thickening oil spill, a horrid black liquid filling every road and crack in town, like rancid fat slickering into the town's veins. They're after someone, said Hamish, his heart fluttering slightly. A grown-up. Kablang! The roller coaster began to shake. What was that? asked Venk. Kablang! The great metal structure began to creak and shriek. It started to judder and shudder. Venk craned his neck to peer over one side. Oh, he said. What? said Clover. Oh dear, said Venk. What? said everybody. Venk turned to them. One's coming up, he said, looking like he couldn't believe it. One's coming up right now. Coming up where, said Elliot? Coming up here? Buster covered his mouth with his hands, then screamed. It sounded like a tiny mouse squeaking in a box. Panic was setting in. Venk began to tug at the safety bar. We need to spray ourselves, said Buster, opening up his PPP. We need some hot sauce. No, said Hamish. If we all stink of hot sauce, the terrible might work it out. It's too obvious. Look, I've done this before. He turned to face them all. Just stay still. Look blank. Or pretend you're in mid-screen. We're on a roller coaster after all. If it sees us, we should look like we're scared. So look convincing. It was the only plan they had. Everyone immediately pulled a ridiculous face. Buster looked like he had constipation. Clover looked like she'd stubbed her toe. Venk looked like he'd been told his feet had just fallen off. Shunk! The whole roller coaster bent to the right. Cry! What if the entire thing toppled over? Shunk! It was bending to the left now. Thrakash! One nasty hand slapped over the railings. The gang all held their breath. There's a picture of them all. Thrakash! Another hand slapped over and four huge and scratchy fingers felt around for something to grip onto. Then, heave, the great beast appeared. 
this was not a terrible of any of the PDF had seen before. That any of the PDF had seen before. It had small slits for eyes and pincers where its nose should have been. Its cloak pulled back slightly to reveal a stomach covered in oily fat suckers. If anyone could have screamed, that would have been the moment they chose. This thing was the grossest, ugliest, worstest thing they'd ever seen. It clambered and flopped all over the children, planting one horrible foot in Hamish's lap and one wet hand on Venk's disgusted face before moving down the roller coaster car, heaving its horrid, flabby, slimy body past each child's face. Ew! But it didn't seem to suspect that these were anything other than six ordinary, boring, stinky, starkly children frozen in time. It's gone right past us, whispered Elliot through the corner of his mouth. It's not us it's interested in, Hamish hissed back. Look. The terrible was sitting on the edge of the roller coaster tracks now, facing the town. It was on its haunches, snuffling and grunting and scratching like a dog. It's looking at the clock, whispered Alice. Her eyes widened as the terrible pulled something out from deep within its cloak and... Fava! Oh my goodness, this was the bugler. It was warning the rest of the terribles. Fava! The power of the bugle was enormous. The kids' hair all blew to the front of their heads. Feng's ears flapped in the wind. Down below, hundreds of terribles began to thunder away, leaving the town, some of them on their requines, others billowing through starkly on foot, on their cloaks flapping behind them at speed. They need to see the clock, thought Hamish, as the smallest brother of a cousin of a, of a smell, of a hint, of a rumour, of an idea began to form in his mind. One of them always needs to keep its eye on the clock. Minutes later... After the flash, and they'd watched each and every terrible bound back to whatever it were, wherever it was they came from, Buster clicked go on his roller coaster controller again, taking them back to the bottom of the ride. Pale, sweaty and with wobbly legs, the PDF was so grateful to be back on solid ground. Come on, said Buster, rather shaken. I'll drop you all off at home. The ride back into the heart of Starkly was silent. Each of the kids was wearing one of Clover's fake moustaches so that anyone who spotted them might just think a strange family of tiny adults was taking a ride in an ice cream van. Hamish stared out of the window. The Terribles hadn't even been careful to leave things as they found them this time. Bins had been flipped over, windows were chipped and cracked, a car had been spun onto its roof. There was rubbish all over the streets. A few unprocessed grown-ups stood around, pointing at them, noticing what had happened but unable to work out how. The PDF stayed low in their seats as they passed. If the Terribles are getting this careless, said Alice, that means they're not as bothered about being found out. No one needed to point out that this was not a good sign. It could only mean that something big was on the cards. The final event was drawing closer and there was only two pauses to go. Hamish jumped out at number 13 Lovelock Close and waved the gang off. It had been quite a night and all, all he wanted to do now was get inside, eat a hot meal and go straight to bed. But as he turned round, he noticed something unusual about his house. All the lights were off. He frowned. Hello, he said, pushing open the front door. Mum? Jimmy? He stood in the doorway and listened. There was no answer. Jimmy? James? he shouted, now with a slight quiver in his voice. Mum? He started to feel very uneasy indeed. And as he walked into the living room and noticed the wide open French doors and the spilled cup of tea by the armchair and the chocolate mustn't grumble scattered all over the floor, Hamish Ellaby realised the terrible, terrible, terrible truth.